Okay. Joining us now, finally, I'll introduce you, Emily Shire, politics editor at Bustle, Ami Horowitz, satirist, documentarian. And uh, anyway, so now we're getting all of these protests going on. Do you support this crap, Emily? Uh, I support protests. I certainly don't support violence, and I cannot remotely condone what happened at UC Berkeley. Can you condone Madonna saying she's thought uh, extensively about blowing up the White House? Uh, I think I do agree that that quote was taken out of context. I think it did no favor to well, feminists I'll, or people who supported the march. Why was it? How was violence. it taking out of context in any way, shape, because or form? Because she said, I have thought and didn't encourage people to play act the on cu- it. Play the cut. Because if and I... to our detractors that insist that this march will never add up to anything, f*** you. F*** you. But this is the hallmark of revolution. Yes, I'm angry. Yes, I am outraged. Yes, I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. What is out of context there? Well, she continues on to say that you take to the streets and you protest. Wait a minute. Uh, wait, 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 slow down. Yes, I have thought about blowing up the White House. Now, let's just go back. Let's say you love Barack Obama. So let's say Barack Obama is <laughs> the president. I don't know if I would say that, but uh, uh, he's probably the biggest failed president in modern times. You know that, right? He's sure. You can't. Good. I'm glad you finally realized it. You're eight years behind me, but that's a bit different story. All right. So. They're talking about blowing up the White House. Let's say Sean Hannity on the Fox News channel used the exact same words as Madonna, and it's the Obama White House. What do you think would have happened to Sean Hannity? I think you would be criticized the way Madonna was criticized. Criticized or arrested by the Secret Service, questioned by the Secret Service, and probably fired. Look, people make these comments. Donald Trump during the campaign said Second Amendment supporters could do something about Hillary Clinton, implying that she could be assassinated. No, and there were no people it was implying the, that they can vote against her. People in the CIA raised deep concerns about those comments and what they were suggesting, but it was speech and not Excuse action. Excuse me, I know people in the CIA and FBI, and everybody understood what he said, and nobody from the government went to talk to him. Uh, Ami Horowitz, what would happen if I said what Madonna said on radio or TV? I don't know if you'd be arrested, but you'd be fired for sure. Fired? Absolutely, no question about Walked it. Walked out the door that day? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, not even a chance to clean my desk. No, and, you, and you'd be vilified and crucified. But now, to be fair, she was vilified by a certain segment of the population. The rest, but the she rest was of the snowflake. By the rest, exactly. Yes, the, the snowflakes are loving this. The snowflakes are loving what happened, you know, in Berkeley last night, right. and they're calling for more of it. That's what, listen. I personally love that kind of stuff because I love when it exposes the hard. I guess, let's be honest, the hard left we're talking about, but exposes the. the, See, the I disagree. I think this is the base of the Democratic Party. This is them. Well, Occupy Wall Street. Well, wait a second. But Black the, lives. But I would say that the hard left is becoming more and more the base of the Democratic Party. I think that if you look at Hillary Clinton is going to be the last mainstream candidate the Democrats are going to put up for a long time. I think you Bernie Sanders is a specter of what the future of the Democratic Party is becoming, and it's becoming more of a hard left party. So in that sense, I do agree. Emily? Uh, I still think that this is a fringe of the party. I don't think that this is... In fact, I don't know if these are people who would have voted for Clinton. I would have actually sooner guessed that they were Jill Stein supporters or people who wrote in a third-party candidate. Um, but I don't think it's representative the same way that I don't think Richard Spencer and David Duke are representative of the right or even the hard right. Nobody, I think I, I they don't are even, fringe voices who get a lot of attention. I don't attention. think anybody really knows except the media obsesses over David Duke and and what's this? What's his first name? Spencer. Richard Spencer. Okay, and no, I've that's never, the one married to a Jewish woman. I've never. That that's the one. The one. Who married to a Jewish woman? That's the guy that was just like being drummed out of the uh, KKK or the right wing. Uh, I have no idea. Yeah. I've never heard the term alt right before this election. Have you? I heard no. it mostly through this election through Steve Bannon talking about it in regards to Breitbart. I don't remember Steve Bannon talking about calling himself alt right. It's a fi- except- it's a fictitious moniker. Well, well what it he means is he's in a Mother Jones interview. He said we are a platform for the alt right. Right. That's what he did say. He didn't say whether. OK, he what does the or... alt right mean? He is a different kind of conservative and and in many ways a populist and putting America first in that sense, nationalism. Yes, I think you have uh, a problem the, with that. If in its purest form, no, I think I have a problem with the alt right because they tend to condone uh, a fair bit of anti-Semitism, racism, uh, homophobia okay, in no, their circles. Th- there's no bigger supporters of the state of Israel than conservatives like Sean Hannity. None. They don't exist. The biggest supporters, and Ami, you back me up here. 100%. The evangelical community is yep. the most supportive of Israel than any other voting bloc in the country. And they're conservatives. I don't know a conservative that supports racism, sexism, 
anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, xenophobia, homophobia. I don't think any of them do. This has been a false narrative that your friends on the left have advanced. It's all false. Well, I think you're right. Look, I'm a proud Zionist, and I think a big conflict for me and what may be a problem for Zionists in the future is how the left and Democrats deal with that potential conflict. What I will say is that I assure you, I believe that you know no conservatives who harbor anti-Semitic uh, racist views. And that's why I'd say the alt-right would should maybe not actually identify as conservative because I think it's selling the name of conservatives. But I think there is a alt-radical left, and I think we saw it on display. I think Black Lives Matter, we have a tape of them talking about the White House must die. We have tapes of them saying, what do we want, pigs in a blanket? Uh, you know, pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon. What do we want, dead cops? When do we want them now? And those people were invited to the Obama White House on multiple occasions, and Hillary sought their endorsement. I, I think that the the the, the again the moniker of alt right that that just I think just muddies the, the issue. I think the the issue and what's what is important to me is if you look at what the fringe right is, so the racists, the homophobes, all those people, they are truly a fringe small part of if you want to call it the right the problem is that if you look at the left that fringe group is a much much larger group the 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 anti-white the anti-semitism that you see coming from the left is a larger group and <clears throat> i dare say become not it's not mainstream by any sense but you're right that conflict you talked about that democrats have vis-a-vis what does it say? Israel is, is, a, is a big one and becoming more of a problem. What does it say when Obama encourages these protests like the Women's March where Madonna and Ashley Judd speaks? Well, I, I would strongly hesitate to put the Women's March in the category of what we saw at UC Berkeley. The Women's March. Uh, it, that yeah, was where like, Madonna, your girlfriend, and uh, Ashley Judd, your other girlfriend. They, that's where she they and I spoke. practice Kabbalah together. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, Do you really practice Kabbalah with her? No. Uh, she wouldn't know me uh, from Adam. But... <laughs> See how lucky uh, we are? And by the way, you have your family's pretty normal. They're conservative like me, right? Uh, we have some conservative people. We have some not so conservative people in my family. Um, so it's what a mix. happened? It's what like happened America. In your, what happened in your case? Uh, why I am that? Why I am? Uh, I think you mean by why I work for uh, a feminist millennial publication. I am a feminist millennial. But I think there are a lot of... What does of it mean to be a feminist? What does that mean? I'll tell you what. Hold your answer. Uh, Emily Shire and, of course, Ami Horowitz will come back on the uh, other side of all this. Joe Theismann's going to be with us, too. And we'll talk a little Super Bowl at the bottom of the half hour. One of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. I have discovered something amazing. The best way to buy travel. It's called Upside.com. And I'll tell you why I love it. And it's going to put money in your pocket. Every time you buy a trip at Upside.com... You save a ton of money. They give you an Amazon gift card worth 100 200 even 300 bucks every single time. And the way they do it is pretty clever. Well, they Upside will bundle your flight and hotel together for one low price. And they give you so many options. Oh, you want to save $1,000 on your trip? Well, if you do a three-hour stop over here, we'll save you $1,000. They give you options you never thought of. And also, they at Upside, they'll help you save money on business travel. And they give you free Amazon gift cards every time you book with Upside.com. And I'm talking about serious money, 100 200 300 bucks. So if you're a frequent traveler, you're going to love this. Your company will save a ton of money. You'll get thousands in these gift cards, and you get to keep your miles. And here's the best thing I'm offering today. If you mention my name, Hannity, when you go to Upside.com, you're guaranteed to get at least a $200 Amazon gift card for your first trip. Guaranteed. 200 bucks in your pocket. Just use my name, Hannity, and it gets you that $200 Amazon gift card. Why would you not do it? You're going to love Upside.com. Quick break. Right back. We'll continue. Still waiting to fly out all those libs who promised to leave if Trump were elected. The jet is ready. This is the Sean Hannity Show. Check out Sean live every weekday from 3 to 6 Eastern here on iHeartRadio. Fewer Americans are losing their jobs and workers are more productive. The Labor Department says new filings for unemployment benefits were down by 14,000 in the last week to 246,000, marking the 100th week in a row they've been below 300,000. That's the longest streak since 1970. California and Virginia report the largest increases in new claims and the biggest declines were in Pennsylvania, New York and Georgia. The productivity of America's workers increased by 1.3 percent in the fourth quarter after advancing an impressive three and a half percent in the third, but productivity had fallen over the 
three previous quarters, and it's running historically low, which has been pushing up total labor costs. Workers at Washington, D.C.'s Trump International Hotel are voting to unionize. Around 40 housekeepers and guest room workers voted to join United Here Local 25 last week, and more could join in the coming months. It is tax filing season once again. First decision, whether to itemize. One in three taxpayers itemize when millions more actually can itemize. So if you're paying mortgage interest, real estate taxes, or you're making charitable contributions, very important to consider itemizing deductions to lower your taxable income. That's Jennifer Owens, a master tax advisor at H&R Block. She says, think about any life changes you've had over the last year and also make sure you know your correct filing status. Technology companies are getting a big windfall in profits thanks to an accounting change in how employee stock options are treated, and that change adds up to almost a billion dollars for Facebook. The accounting change was approved last year by the Finance Accounting Standards Board, which essentially allows companies to treat valuable stock options as employee compensation deductible on income taxes. The change added $400 million to Microsoft's bottom line and $200 million for Alphabet, although Alphabet adopted the change later. That windfall will help Facebook pay a $500 million jury award. The North Texas jury has decided Facebook's virtual reality headset technology was actually created by a company called id Software and not Facebook's Oculus division, which Facebook bought in 2014. Consumer and Business News, Joe McConnell, NBC News Radio. Good news, Comcast customers. The cable company will let people use Roku in place of a cable box. Bad news, Comcast customers. At the end of a beta test, Comcast will start charging you to use your Roku. No word on what that fee will be, but Comcast already charges a $7.45 per month additional outlet fee when you supply a box of your own. Facebook wants you to make some new friends. The Discover People feature inspires users to introduce themselves by updating their profile, then scrolling through a list of upcoming events to see who else might be going. You can also now browse through lists of people in your city or who share the same employer. Tesla Motors is changing its name to just Tesla. The name change hints that Tesla thinks it's more than just cars as it also sells batteries and solar panels. North American business orders for robots were up 10% last year to a total of 35,000. The Robotic Industries Association says the majority of those robots were shipped to the automobile industry. Tech Report, Larry Olson, NBC News Radio. There's an effort to advance a medical marijuana bill in Georgia. Right now, residents can legally possess cannabis oil for medical reasons. But since Georgia doesn't allow anyone to grow in state, patients have to seek medical marijuana outside the state. A proposed bill would ease restrictions. Well, you might want to think twice about wearing your shoes inside your house. Lisa G. reports. According to KidSpot, shoes have an average of 421,000 different types of bacteria on them. Experts say you should think about all the things you step in on a typical day. According to University of Arizona microbiologist and professor Kelly Reynolds, the things shoes walk on, like leaves or debris, serves as food for the bacteria and helps them grow. The study also says that the transfer of bacteria from your shoes to your home happens almost 90 to 99 percent of the time. Lisa G., NBC News Radio, New York. Health Update, Sarah Lee Kessler, NBC News Radio. Twelve games last night in the NBA, only two of which were decided by single digits. The Celtics now have a one and a half game lead in the Atlantic Division after turning back the Raptors 109-104, while the Knicks rallied past the Nets 95-90. The biggest blowouts, the Bulls gored the Thunder 128 to 100. Cavaliers clobbered the T-Wolves 125 to 97. The Red Hot Heat won their ninth in a row 116 to 93 over the Hawks. The Warriors racked up win number 42 on the season, swatting the Hornets. It's 126-111 as they connected on 21 threes. Elsewhere, the Clippers eclipsed the Suns 124-114. Jazz tuned up the Bucks 104-88. The Grizzlies mauled the Nuggets 119-99. Mavericks beat the Sixers 113-95. Pistons shot down the Pelicans 118-98. And the Pacers ran past the Magic 98-88. College hoops, it was number three Kansas over second-ranked Baylor 73-68. That's sports. Marker Day, NBC News Radio. Sean Hannity on iHeartRadio. All right, as we continue, Sean Hannity Show, 800 941 Sean, toll free telephone number. Joe Theismann will weigh in on Super Bowl coming up on Sunday. You don't want to miss that. Emily Shire, politics editor for Bustle. Ami Horowitz, overall lunatic, satirist, documentarian who has more guts than anybody we've ever had on the program as he's infiltrated the Syrian refugee population and 
he goes into Muslim communities and asks people, do you want Sharia law or constitutional law and other crazy ideas that he has? All right, so I was asking you, what is a feminist today? Because I think it represents women basically that only want abortions <laughs> as evidenced by, well, want abortion legal, as evidenced by pro-life groups were denied access to the women's march because so, they're pro-life. So it's funny that you bring that up because I was actually hilarious, speaking I know. to uh, the founder of New Wave, Fem- New Wave Feminists who uh, led one of the pro-life yeah, groups. Yeah, we had that her was. on. She's great. I love her. She was at the march. She was denied sponsorship. Uh, she was able to go, as she very well should have been, and I personally disagree with denying her sponsorship. Uh, I don't think feminism means you have to be pro-choice. I think feminism means encouraging economic, social, political equal well, opportunities the, for men and women. But you voted for Hillary. Why would you vote for a I woman? I did not say I voted for Hillary. Who did you vote for, then? Uh, I'm not discussing that in air because I don't think that's relevant for figuring out what feminism I'm is certain. or my definition of I'll feminism I'll tell you what. Is. I've got 1500 bucks in my pocket, and I'll take you at your word. I'll bet you you voted for Hillary. You know what? Money is tempting, but I'm going to keep my mouth shut on this one. Really? It's tempting for to, to hand it over to me? I'm a reporter. Believe me, 1500 is very tempting. <laughs> Ami, don't you think she voted for Hillary? I No comment. What do you mean, no comment? I, she's a journalist. You can't put her on the spot like that who she voted for. Don't tell me how to do my show. Do I, the... uh, do I tell you you can't go infiltrate the refugee population? You I didn't tell you I, that. You love when I do that. I do love when you do it, so you should love when I put her on the spot. I, it's good for me. I don't, I'm, I'm done the bother me. No, yeah. Not putting me on the spot. Oh, okay. You but do you that, you do that enough. Gee, what, what are you asking around for a date after this interview or what? <laughs> What's going on with you guys? <laughs> now you've teamed up against me. Anyway, so go ahead. What's a feminist? You're one. You're asking me? Yeah. Uh, people believe uh, is, I. I don't know anymore, to be honest with you. I mean, to me, uh, there are fem- like the, the people who marched against uh, abortion. Those are feminists, no question about it. Right. If you believe in women empowerment, however you feel that manifests itself, then you're a feminist. Linda, of all my staff at this radio show, who gets paid the most? James. No, you and James. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't no. that accurate? You and James. It's true. I am a well-paid uh, woman, yes. And do I and do and are women treated any differently that work for me than men? You mean do the men on the staff order you lunch too? You, you really starting? The answer I'm just is yes. You. <laughs> well, you do it because you, you think I'm manorexic and you want me to eat. You need to eat more. Okay, but but the fact of the yes, man- there is an equal. Listen, everybody is treated equally here. It's an equal opportunity. Yeah. You know, crazy place to work. I know. And, oh, my gosh, last time I checked, uh, Jason's African-American, and he has a mohawk. And it's blonde. And he actually... And we have a female service dog. Go ahead. Weigh in on it. I, I see you. You, I see the tensions what building. What does my hair have to do with it? He's an African-American with a mohawk. Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what? Why? Why? I got a break. Good to see you both. Emily, thank you. And Ami, always good to see you.